Hey, happy Wednesday, October 25th. So, what's the, one of the hardest things about dealing with addiction? It's dealing with people still in active addiction. Especially when you're related to them, it's really hard. Um, I remember the biggest thing that changed me for the positive is when I stopped playing the victim. And that takes, a, that's really hard to do. Um, it's really hard to do. But I realized my place in things. I realized the people around me, their place in things, and how. And I don't hold any resentments anymore. Um, it was really hard when I came back from Afghanistan. I um, I was still active duty. I was still on Title Ten orders while I was recovering in Madigan. I had to stay in Washington State. Um, went through all sorts of tribulations. I was homeless after I was in San Francisco. Um, luckily back in Oregon, I was put back on active duty and I was active duty, um, in the guard for a while, a station in Portland. One of the hardest things is seeing people I love active in addiction and it hurts some people still believe I never went to Afghanistan, that I just like left where I was living in New York and just disappeared. And that's gonna take time to heal. It's gonna take time for people to understand that you can't tell the military where you're gonna be stationed. You're either stationed there or you're, you're not. And um, I'm, I'm upset that TikTok are jerks. Um, I got booted off my live. My live kept going for a couple minutes and they're saying I was promoting um, drugs and alcohol. If anything, I'm like promoting recovery from that. Definitely not promoting <laughs> drugs and alcohol. So now I've been hit with hate speech in the past and promotion of illicit substances, which you should be able to talk about being in recovery without getting in trouble. So yeah. It, it was rough, it was rough, like, being reminded of, um, it, that I had a lot of responsibility at a very young age. I had two kids by 20. I had lost my first child by barely 23. Um, it's hard seeing, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just so appreciative of where I am now, where I am in life, and being able to say I've got issues. I'm not a perfect person. But um, I may have been victimized, but I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. It keeps coming up. People keep asking me, what's the number one reason I came out? What's the number one reason I went public? You know what it was? Too many people were holding it over my head for leverage. Too many people were threatening to out me. Um, and that used to be really important. Um, I could have been kicked out of the military. Back then, that was the only job I had. Even though I wasn't actively doing anything, I wasn't going out on my free time and being like this. I wasn't, but people knew who I was on the inside. Um, no matter what, there's not a single person that I did not say, I am a lesbian woman trapped in a man's body. I didn't know what transgender is. I'll repeat this. There's not a single person I have been close to or been with that I did not say that to. No one can claim they didn't know that. Because I've always said that. Um, I've explained why I was very emotional, why I thought different ways, why I really didn't like guys at all. I repeat, I said, because I didn't know what transgender was. So it's not that I thought I was transgender and kept that a secret. I had no idea what that meant. Never heard that word before. I heard transsexual, tranny, things like that. But in 2010, never heard what transgender was. It wasn't until like 2020 I even heard that word for the first time. I have told everybody I'm a lesbian trapped in a man's body. Some people didn't think anything of that, but there's not a single person. If they say I didn't say that, they're lying or they just didn't pay attention. Um, I would even say that in the military because back then it, it was that was separate from me actually wanting to be a girl, a woman. But um, yeah, it was held over me. Um, 
everything that I could possibly want in life, if I didn't give money to certain people, if I did not do what they said, if I told people things that were secret that weren't really secret, it just there were stories that made me look horrible. And if I, did, if I tried to correct them, I was gonna be outed. So yeah, my number one reason in 2021 for just being done with it is too many people held it over my head and I was sick of something like that being held over my head. And remember, people made me feel shame about it. So I was terrified, I was scared. I thought it was this horrible thing. And when I came out, I thought the world was gonna end and it didn't. Truth really does set you free. It set me free. It set me free from people trying to control my life, trying to tell me what I could and couldn't say, who I could and couldn't see, and having to go along with their narrative. Now there's nothing that can be held over my head. And I'm so happy and so grateful to be a free woman, a free woman at last. That just means can't, things can't be, I can't be blackmailed with things by people. Love everybody. Hey everybody, look, the sun came out. It's not raining anymore. There's beautiful story behind me. There's the bridge. Anyway, so yeah, they think I might have DID, which is like disassociative disorder slash multiple personalities. Wow, my eyes are beautiful. Wow. So like, how do I know I'm not the same person sometimes? Like, I'll tell you this, I felt super uncomfortable in the outfit I was wearing earlier. I, um, when I put this on, I was feeling very dark, very dark. And, um, I don't know the exact reasons it was even picked out, to be completely honest. And the tattoos, tattoos aren't me on my face. But, um, why take it off, you know? I left them on, because I think they're pretty. But I did not feel connected to it, I did not feel it was me. Completely different train of thoughts, and... I don't remember most of the day, to be honest with you guys. I don't remember it at all. Um, I'm feeling bright and happy, but I'm not going to change my outfit for that. 